the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. We thank him for another Sunday in his presence. Each time he gives us opportunity to come together, it's marvelous because he fellowships with us. And uh, we bless him for what he's doing in our lives and not just our lives, what he's doing through us for other people. And we bless him for the body of Christ uh, at large and the whole nations uh, in the world. All right, we welcome viewers across the nations. This is Liberty House International Church coming to you all the way from USA and by way of YouTube and Facebook. In case you miss any portion of this live stream, please go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org. Once again, libertyhouseusa.org. We have so many videos there, and you can treat yourself uh, to these videos, and uh, you'll be enriched. I can tell you that you'll be enriched. Uh, if you are soaked in tradition and rituals, things that do not have life, you are going to get out of that. If you are bondage, you are going to come out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Truth makes free, and that is what you are going to encounter as you listen and watch these videos. Right? And for you and not against you, my mission here is to push you forward, to help you advance in the relationship with the Lord. So in case I say something that has not resonated with you, Please don't pick a fight with me. Hallelujah. My intent is not to cause any offense or to be demeaning or condescending in any way. But I have to let you know my delivery is very unique. I wish I, I can hear you say unique. All right. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. I have to say all these things. So some people, the way they don't know how to judge according to the word. They judge according to their own opinion. So I have to say these things so everything is clear. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. So I have a short time to do justice to what I want to talk about. And uh, I've been struggling with a uh, kind of title because at times, because of space, you are thinking about how to title something so it will fit uh, into the space. And also at times, some people, the moment they hear or see certain things, it's a turn off. They don't, they don't even want to read it. And I remember uh, Joyce Meyer said this way back, I think uh, many, many years ago. She taught on uh, obedience or whatever. And the uh, tape was lying down there. Nobody was getting it. And then all of a sudden, she changed the title to Radical Blessings. And then people were rushing for it. You see, and these days, social media, that's what it's become. Somebody will, you know... <laughs> Put something catchy there, and everybody wants to look at it. And at times, you go click on it, what is even put there is not there. Now, they've started doing rest in peace. The first time I saw it, I didn't know. So I saw somebody's like, oh, rest rest in peace. You know, and I was like, what? This is not happening. I click on it, you know, ah, the person is not dead. And I said, oh, what is this before? And I heard some of them say, they do these things in order to get views. You know, but we Christians, we don't do that. So please don't do that. I want to talk about something that is so crucial. And that's what I'm thinking about how to title it. You see, we are living in perilous times. And I wonder if people ask themselves the question, is my faith really in Jesus Christ? Is my faith really in truth, the word of God? Because there are a lot of Christians Many Christians who think that they have faith or their faith is in Jesus Christ, their confidence is in Jesus Christ, their trust is in Jesus Christ, but it's not. What am I trying to say? It's like, wow, how can it be? They are Christians, so their faith is there. No, their faith, okay, is in Jesus. When they heard the gospel, they believe it. They became born again. But now that they have become born again, their faith might have shifted. And I want you to realize that. It's true you are born again. By your faith, you can misplace your faith. You can shift your faith from Jesus to a human being. And you can shift your faith from the word of God to an item. Let's read this first. No, no. Let's go to the uh, and read about the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20. Let me wait. Let me wait your appetite. Exodus 20 from verse 1. 
You see, when you read the scriptures and you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to minister to you, you read and still the veil will be on. And we are having that in a lot of local assemblies, what we call churches. They are reading, but the veil is still on. So Exodus 20 verse 1, let's read together, read. And God spoke. Who spoke? He spoke all these words, saying, read, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Who were the people that were brought out of the land of Egypt? Israelites. So who is God talking to now? The Israelites. Is that clear? So say amen. Amen. Okay. So he brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He calls it bondage. And it's amazing that some people are in bondage and they don't even see it as bondage. You see, but God the Father, he realized this bondage and he wanted them out. And we know how stubborn these people were. He brought them out and yet the slightest challenge they wanted to go back. And that's why I'm saying that as Christians, you are born again all right. But if you don't maintain, if you don't maintain the victory you have over sin, if you don't maintain the victory that you have over Satan, and you don't, con- and you don't continue, or you refuse to yield your instruments to the Lord as instruments of righteousness, before you realize your faith in Christ is shifted. Just like some houses, before you realize cracks are coming into the building. So before you realize there's a crack in your faith, because one major thing where it happens is you are listening to the wrong thing. And that's another thing, but I don't have time to address it. A lot of what is being taught, 90% is not truth. And I'll say that again for you to understand. From Genesis to Revelation, They contain uh, statements that are true. True statements. Narratives, accounts, reports, things that really happen. We have in it even the Ten Commandments. Um, Moses was on the uh, Mount of Sinai and the Lord gave that to him. All those things are there. And then right after that, he gave some other commandments. And these are words from the Lord. And I want you to understand but when we talk about truth, we are talking about something that is alive. The Ten Commandments is not alive. It has no life. The mosaic has no life. Amen. Judaism has no life. Because the life is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is life. Amen. Life is the light. Yes. And light is truth. Yes. Do you get it? And grace and truth came through Jesus Christ because he is the way, the life, and the truth. So when he speaks, he speaks life. Before Jesus showed up, they had to believe in the Old Testament. I mean, the the, the, the law. There was no life in it. There was no life. And how to even obey that was difficult. That's why Jesus had to do that. So he cleared us all. So when we talk about life, we are talking about what Jesus brings to the table. Jesus Christ himself. When we talk about truth, we are talking about Jesus Christ. And at times I use the phrase present truth. Because the Bible refers to what? The old covenant as what? The ministry of condemnation and the ministry of what? Death. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. The ministry of death and the ministry of condemnation. Alright? Right now we are ministers of the new covenant. And even though we are ministers of the new covenant, some people still go back. They want to preach to what? The old. Like they are married to uh, somebody, they claim they are divorced, but they are still, you know, hanging out with the person, doing what they, they don't need to do. And now they are in the first marriage too. You ought not to be so. Hallelujah. So Jesus brings something new to the table. That's why when Jesus showed up, do I have to do with these things? But we have scripture, we are not finished. Okay. 
When Jesus started ministry, Mark chapter 1, for instance, you are reading the book of Mark in this month. If you started, you see it there. Jesus started his ministry not preaching about the mosaic, not Judaism, not the Ten Commandments, not the law, nothing. He talked about truth and he said they should repent. And he talked about the message of the kingdom or what he brought. And he talked about the fact that people have to follow him. Do you get it? Yeah. Yes. If the law was still in vogue, the law was still active, he would have talked about it, but he didn't. Then we have another example like, uh, you know, Jesus had a hard time tra training the disciples. They were back and forth. Because they are used to the law, the law, the law, the law. So we have to train them well and cleanse them from the law. Now, when Paul, who was in Saul, persecuted the church, the moment he became born again or he had a revelation of who Jesus is, what did he do? He preached Jesus right away. According to Acts chapter 9, verse 20, he preached that Jesus is the Messiah. You see the shift? And then I can give you a lot of scriptures. You can tell Paul didn't, didn't teach about the law. If he teaches about the law, he's telling you that move away from the law and come to what? Grace or come to the truth. But it's a mixture that is going on in the church. And it's not okay. That is why people do all these kinds of things that are going on. And so this wrong teaching has affected a lot of Christians. It's, it's, it's as it were, bit by bit, is weakening the confidence of people in Christ, weakening the confidence of, uh, uh, what do you call it? The faith of people in Christ. So gradually is shifting. And some people, they've shifted from Christ. That is why they now worship even ministers of the gospel. Do you get it? Man that God created has become what? Their God. But I'm going to share some things with you that is going to shock you. And it's going on now. Hallelujah. Amen. And they don't like messages like this. Because when you walk in error for a long time, Satan capitalizes on it. So now there's a spirit upon your life. You are bewitched. So you don't see truth. And that's why they fight those who walk. Talk about truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's what Jesus started, New Covenant. Like I always say, if you read it in the Old Testament, make sure that you can interpret it or look at it in the light of the New Covenant. If it's not there, then you have to leave it. Okay. So truth is the New Testament. Hallelujah. That is what the uh, law is. If you want to use it as law, that's what the law is. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's what is active. Okay. Hmm. I talk to ministers of the gospel and some of them, they always go back and quote. I didn't know I would have prepared some of these things to say it. Because at times I share this with my wife. How they talk about uh, the Lord is this, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, or whatever. Their protection that they have, they will go to Old Testament and quote it, but they can't find it in the New Testament. You know why? Because they don't even read the New Testament like they read the Old Testament. That's the problem. And no wonder they are taking people back because they read things like, oh, yeah, um, your heart has been this towards me. You have robbed me, like Malachi, for instance. They read Malachi 3, where it says that you have robbed me in tithes and often. So then they take it, yeah, yes. The Lord is saying, you have robbed me. You have robbed me. But meanwhile, no robbery is going on. But he applied that to the now and say you have robbed me. And therefore, that's why there's a judgment. There's curse or whatever. You are reading the wrong book. You see, and this is what is going on. I'm just giving you one kind of example. And I know one guy, anytime he stands, his prayer is always against uh, attack from the enemy. Attack from the enemy. Attack from the enemy. Now, so the way we can be sin conscious, the same way you can become attack what? Conscious or devil conscious instead of becoming Jesus conscious. Do you get what I'm saying? I used to be that way because I grew up in that kind of teaching. But thank God for revelation and I changed. We have the Holy Spirit in us. So the way I pray is amazing. That's why I said I was going to show you the way that some of the how I pray for these hours. It's changed. And now I don't wake up and then the first thing, ah, you see, when you are attacked or devil conscious, when you wake up, you say, who? Oh, the devil, you know, when I was sleeping, I don't know. 
you know, probably the devil has released something in the realm of the spirit against me. So every word God is spoken against me in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood. And I plead the blood against the... No, 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 no. You see, you are praying wrongly. Where do you get information from? Suspicion. Assumption. Presumption. But if the Holy Spirit really lives in you, when you wake up and something has been said against you, or you are going to go a certain way, that is going to create a problem. If you have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He should tell you that there's this. So come against it. So what I'm saying is this. I just don't stand up and begin to pray. And I say, okay, the devil goes about like a roaring lion. So he's going about. So now let me resist it. Let me... No, 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 no. Jesus didn't pray that way. Do, do, do we see it in the Bible? Jesus didn't pray that way. It was David who consistently prayed against his enemies. <laughs> it was David. So when you are a school of the Old Testament, that's what happens. You are always praying like somebody is attacking, somebody is attacking, somebody is attacking. Mm -hmm. Alright? In the New Testament, Jesus didn't pray that way. He knew the will of God so much. His confidence was placed in the Father. His confidence was placed in the Father's word. The guy was so confident. Very, very confident. Very, very secure. Fearless. Very bold. Very courageous. Because he had truth working in him. And he was walking in truth. He was in union with the Father. His uh, fellowship with the Father was, uh, what do you call it, impeccable. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That is where his confidence came from. I'm saying something. I want you to get it well. His confidence came from there. It's not because he woke up in the morning and he anointed himself with oil. The confidence was in his union with the Father. And up to now, people are doing the oil thing. Hallelujah. So when I pray, for instance, I thank God. Somebody came to me with a question. I've been sharing this for years. That I don't pray for protection. I thank God for protection. And somebody said, okay, uh, you keep saying you don't ask God for direction. And I said, yes, I don't. Because I thank him for direction. He consistently guides me. God's GPS system, greater than the GPS system, greater than the navigational system. Amen. It's in me, the Holy Spirit, right. who knows everything. Yes. And in the Bible says he's my guide. Amen. He guides me in all truth, Amen. and he even shows me to, things to come. Amen. So do I need a guide? I don't. So why should I pray for a guide? I have the guide. So if you go outside the country and you have a tour guide, what do you do? You just follow him. You don't, you don't stand there. The, the guy is leading you to your place of interest and you are still standing. So where is the guide? Yeah. Where is the guide? I want a guide. You have a guide. Follow the guide. And that is something that believers are not taught. That's a confusion. They don't know the Holy Spirit. And they don't recognize even his voice. So that's the challenge. And people ask me at times. And I said, these are series of lessons that you have to hear. How to detect. How to determine. How to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this is why I always say that if you don't know what is written. The Bible that is written. The word of God that is written. You don't know it. When the Holy speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks, you'll be confused. You are hearing him all right, but you are confused because you don't know even the basic, the foundation. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, that is this, this house. You have to appreciate the wisdom and what God is uh, doing with us. When we started or we planted this church, some of the things we are doing was in the book. I mean, when I say book, was it, was it like uh, my plan, intention to do? But I'm trusting God and He keeps leading me. So, like we are reading. Every month, a book uh, in the New Testament. Every month, a book in the New Testament. The more you read, <laughs> how many people do that faithfully? The more you read it, the more you become aware of who Jesus is. Amen. You are opening yourself up to uh, have truth, instill discipline, uh, what do you call principles, instill in your life. You are receiving life. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. It's never said that way of the Old Testament. 
Because Jesus is life. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And whoever follows him will not walk in darkness. This is sweet. So read it. As you read, that gives you that solid foundation that you can build upon. So when the Holy Spirit speaks, you know. Because as you read, the word exposes you, tells you who the Holy Spirit is. And you begin to see how the Holy Spirit interacts with people. How he fellowships, how he leads, how he guides people. But up to now, some people have been born again for ages. And all that they keep doing is they are expecting an angel to show up in their bedroom. If not, to have some dream and three cows in their dreams. <laughs> you know, because of what? Old teaching. Teaching that is stale. It's not fresh. It's not present truth. Hallelujah. And that's why people all continue to they'll, they'll do scriptures like Search my heart, O God. Oh, is this some words? Is this 139 or whatever? Search my heart, O God, and know me, try me, there's any wicked way in me. Sin consciousness. But he took you from a place where you were wallowing in sin. He cleansed you. You are not a sinner. He's living in you. He brought you into his own kingdom. And now he says you have become his tabernacle. If you are that filthy, you think God will make you his tabernacle? So why don't you get it that I'm not filthy anymore? I'm not unclean anymore. I'm holy because he's made me holy. It has nothing to do with how cute I look. It has nothing to do with the color of my skin. It has nothing to do with what is in my bank account. It has nothing to do with the schools that I attended. It has nothing to do with how often I pray, how often I read the word. No. Or how much I give to my church has nothing to do with that. He has made us like he has qualified us. I don't understand why people struggle with these simple, you know, um, gifts, things that the Lord has done through Jesus Christ. He made us. Hallelujah. He didn't say go fast for 40 days. So if you can't do 40 days, just do 21. Those who can't do 21, just do 7 days. If you can't do 7 days, I'll give you 3 days. If you can't do 3 days, just do a day. If you can't do a whole day, just do a half day. And I'm going to make you holy. No! No! How did we become holy? How did we become Mr. Banako? Faith in him. Faith in his word. And I'm repeating this, and I'll be saying that a lot, because that is key. Faith in him, faith in his word. Amen. Faith in him, faith in his word. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. Some people are so... Okay, let me be nice. I tell them to say, but it's in the word. I'll leave that alone. Let's finish this. Because I have some more things to say. So, back to um, Exodus 20. Two, so let's go to three. You see, when God took the people of Israel from the land of Egypt, did he take them out so after three months he would take them back? Come on, answer me. Did he take them out so after three months? Now, if you don't be reading your Bible now, you are not sure. You see, I'm asking, and then, hey, what question is he asking me? You know? Because you don't read your Bible, so you don't know. But if you read your Bible, you know that I know. He said, I'm taking you out and I'm taking you to a place, a land that flows with what? Milk and honey. In the Old Testament, John 10, 10, Jesus said, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's bondage. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus took us from the place of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan. He has brought us into his own kingdom, the kingdom of abundance. But yet, people of God still have a lack kind of mentality. Poverty mindset. And that one, if you don't change it to accept truth, you'll be perfect, you'll be poverty stricken all your life. Even though you are born again. And what you'll be doing is this. you become a hater. Somebody is prospering. They are dressing good. They, they are having fun in life. 
Even though they are pushing the things of the kingdom, and they say, hey, this is for that's all that they do. These people, this is what this says, they didn't know what they said. They are not holy. You have to be holy. You have to be holy. If you even eat, you know, in a way that is okay, they say, no, you are not holy. Because they want you to, to go without food. And they say you are holy. If you dress nice, you are not holy. You know what I'm saying? I remember years ago, I didn't know how to rest. And I started resting. So when I rest, then all of a sudden the devil will attack me like you are a lazy guy. Look at you. What are you doing? Get up. Get up. Why are you resting? <laughs> Get up and do this and do that. And you know, and I will feel so guilty. It was so serious. Then I have to examine the whole thing. What's going on here? Then I came to realize that oh, it's the enemy. And some of us is like that. I joke with my wife all the time. She will tell you. Some Christians, all that they know is pain. They want to experience pain. Then they think they are close to God. If they are not having pleasure, it's like they are sinning. I mean, you know, they are not holy. Pain. Struggle. Hmm? If they are not having pain, okay. They like pain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but me, I don't like pain. He was pain. So I can have a <laughs> pleasure. It's true. Look, he doesn't look. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. I shall not want. Amen. And I took the trouble to teach this many years ago. And I've been teaching this. If you read it, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want, I would say that it's worldly people, people outside the kingdom of God, they have said things like there's a difference between want and their need. They are playing with the English word. But when I when I read the Lord my shepherd, I shall not want it's not English word. It was written in the Aramaic or the Hebrew. And want, lack, need, they are the same. For God, there's nothing like a want, and then something like a need. It's the English world that we have created that. But you go check it out from the strong, vines, whatever. Uh, lack, I shall not want. Want is the same as lack, want is the same as need. So the Lord is your shepherd. You have all that you need. You see, it took me some time, years, to come into that. Because we're not brought up that way. You know, we're trained to believe in poverty. That makes you like a good Christian, solid one. And then we're taught scriptures like the one in Z Proverbs Ecclesiastes. Lord, don't give me too much, so I'll forget about you. You pray, let him give you too much. You come, bring the answers to me. I know what to do with it. Just give me enough. They read scriptures like that. Just give me en enough. So what? I will not go straight away from you. Now, they use some of these scriptures to stop us. God is a God of abundance. Amen. When we talk about abundance, we are talking about excess, yeah. overflow. Amen. More than enough. More than enough. That we know that we know the grace that was upon him. Yet, because of us, he became poor. That we, through his poverty, might become what? Rich. Amen. It's the word. And the reason when you read it, people try to say it's a spiritual thing. It's not blah, 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 blah. So the first thing, he saved you. If you save you spiritual, he saved you. He got you out of where you were, the mess. You are in his kingdom. Do you expect lack? You are his child. Do you expect lack? Do you expect want? Do you expect a need? No. Hallelujah. And if you don't change the way you think, you will be stuck. Seriously, you have to change. Bible calls a renewing of mind. Amen. You hear the word of God, you renew your mind. Yeah. You hear the word of God, you renew your mind. Yeah. Yes, ago we are, we are doing that. Oh, just something small. Everything, oh, just something small. How many people remember that? Some of you were born yesterday, so you don't. Yeah. But we're growing up, everything, just something small, just something little. Yeah. You know, so revelation hit me, and I realized that no. Yeah. You know, certain things you think is too much for God. Oh, this one is easy. God can take care of it. You don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read on. You shall have no one other gods before me. Is it right or is it wrong? I'm asking you a question. Okay, now we are going to be reading together. Don't forget. Read. You shall have no other gods before me. Gods. So there are gods. 
not like the one the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ not the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob mm. now let's read on I want to show you something read you shall not make for yourself a world carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth next verse this is verse 6 right you shall not bow down to them nor serve them what, what is he talking about the gods okay we say gods when we talk about gods do you know what comes to mind do you know what comes to mind okay when we say gods what are we talking about idol so what is an idol false anything any person that you worship other than god that is an idol we have different forms of idol but i'm not going to go into it but i want you to pay attention to this you shall not bow down uh, to them nor serve them for i the lord your god am a jealous god then they call this visiting the iniquity of the fathers of upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Yes, he was talking to the Jews, those who that he took off from the land of Egypt. Jesus had not come yet. So he wasn't addressing the church. He wasn't addressing other nations. That is why in Deuteronomy 28, he tells them specifically, if you obey me, I will exalt you or make you high above all what? Nations. Talking about the nation of Israel. The Bible speaks to three groups of people. He speaks to the Jews, the nation of Israel. He speaks to the heathen, Gentiles, those without covenant with God. And then he speaks to the church, that is the body of Christ. The church came in after Jesus showed up. Or he was, he was uh, seated at the right of God. That is the church. So when you read scripture, you have to ask yourself, who is God addressing? So people take this, for instance, and then they, they have not put people in prison. They said, you see, in, in every place, in every home, there's some sum of idol. I mean, our forefathers, our great, great, great God, they worship idols. That's how we are suffering. So there's, uh, you know, God is visiting the iniquity of our fathers upon us and blah, blah. Wrong teaching, please. Wrong teaching. Why? Because when you become born again, the Bible says that Jesus redeems you from the curse of the law. Even if they are claiming that this is true. According mm. to Galatians 3.13, when you become born again, Jesus redeems you from the curse. So if any law was broken and there's a curse upon your life, upon your family, generationally or whatever, because Jesus became a curse and he has redeemed you from the curse, those who are born again, those who are put, listen to what I'm saying carefully, carefully. Those who are put their faith, their confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, his finished work, his word, what he says, what he has said. You see, there are two different things here. What Jesus says that I've become a curse for you, so I've redeemed you from the curse of the law, is different from what this is saying. It's the same Bible. Do you get the picture? Yeah. In the Old Testament, it says that if you've broken the word, I mean, you come against the commandment of God, God will visit what? He's jealous. So he will visit the liberty of your uh, fathers upon you. But the New Testament it says, I have become a curse for you. So I redeem you from the curse of the Lord. And also in Romans 7 6, He has delivered us from the law. So for the believer, there's no law like this. So you don't come under that. So if you don't come under that, Romans 7 6, can you put it there first? Ah, oh, you have it. read now. But now we have been delivered from what? The law. With the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. So if there's no law, what law have I broken? He delivered me from it. And I'm Mr. Banaco. I'm in his house. He's a law to himself. Yeah. So where, where the law, where is the law coming from? You know, wrong teaching. So whatever, when you were forgiven, when you gave your life to Jesus, everything was forgiven. Yeah. Everyone punishment, everyone judgment, penalty of sin everyone curse he delivered you from every one of them it's wrong for any minister to teach that 
even though you are born again, and these African ministers don't stop it. Even though you are born again, there's still something you can't go on. No. People are where they are because of their wrong belief, misbelief, disbelief. They place their belief in something wrong. That's it. No, I was made to think that way too. Yes, I grew up in this some of these teachings to Revelation Kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let's go back to what? Let's have the uh, Galatians 3 13 for those who have not seen it so they know that you have to know these scriptures. Galatians 3 13. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ has what? Redeemed us. We read, He has delivered us from the law. Now we are reading, He has redeemed us Amen. from the curse of the law, Amen. having become a curse for us. Okay, look at the next verse. Why? He just, he took the people out of Israel. Not to say, okay, you are suffering. Now I'm taking you from that place. Go your way. No. He said, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. So he redeemed us from the curse in order to what? Bless us. So we can be a blessing. Amen. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. You see the word that is used there? Gentiles. Those outside the covenant of God. Amen. Other nations. Who did he know God? Who didn't have anything to do with God? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon them. Just like Abraham. He didn't know God. He was a heathen. So God called him. And the same way, you see, we are we, uh, Abraham is referred to the father of faith in the book of Romans. Yes. You see, the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, Amen. not in Moses, not Amen. in the law, Amen. but in Christ Jesus. Amen. That we might receive what the promise of the Spirit through what faith, faith that is hanging on faith in Him, Jesus, Amen. faith in His finished work. Amen. This is key. Amen. I used to walk around many years ago before Revelation. Then I think that there's a curse, and every time then we are going on a witch hunt. So I turn to say, "You need deliverance." When you don't even need deliverance, they say, "You need deliverance." And when people were making bad choices, but still they would say, "Do you need deliverance?" I help somebody out. Who said, well, I like sex. The person wasn't married, but he said, I like sex. And uh, so you kick out the demon, you cast the demon out, then the next minute she's going to have the sex again. And we keep telling her, look, if you're going to continue to do this, the demon is not going to go away. You know, so some of this is based on choices. That's it, it's based on choices. Choose the word. Hallelujah. Okay, so this clear. Now let's go. So I want you to know that you that you know that there's no curse lurking over your life. Yes. What is on you is blessing. Amen. That's why you are his commandment. How can God live in a curse or live with curse? That's right. He delivered you from the kingdom of darkness, and then you are still under curse, and he's shacking with you. I mean, living with you, sharing, you know, the bedroom with you. And you are sleeping on the same bed as it were with God. No. He has not his light. Amen. Curse is darkness. Yeah. Now let's go back to what we're reading. Uh, Exodus 20. Yeah. We're, we're in the sixth verse, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I want you to get it well. Mm-hmm. It says, You shall not bow down to these things, mm-hmm. and you shall not also what? Serve them. Mm-hmm. Okay, Exodus 26. Are we there yet? Okay. No, let's go back. Five. We shall not what? Bow down, bow down to them, nor serve, serve them. Let's go to the verse, the fourth verse, and then we are revisiting what things he mentioned. Okay, read. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Come on, read. Let's start. Read. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Okay. Then the next verse says, You shall know what? Bow to them, you shall not serve them. So we're talking about idols here. Now I'm going to tell you idols that are in the church, some of them. I'll mention, I won't be able to mention all of them. Do you know why God said this? If you make anything, image, like him, Let's go back to the uh, what it was so I can say it well. 
4. If you make any image like him, verse 4, if you make any image like him, any image like fish, something that is in the water, anything that is on land, like a tree, stone, whatever, you know what he's saying? You are going to place your confidence in that thing. Yeah. That's what you are going to see always before you. Yeah. So he says, no, don't do this. Amen. I'm saying something. Because your faith should be placed in Jesus Christ. Amen. Apart from that, the intangible, the word of God, mm-hmm. is not perceptible to what? Touch. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. He wants your faith to be in him, the creator. He doesn't want your faith to be in the created. Neither the creation. Mm -hmm. The creation. Mm -hmm. Because he's the creator and then we are the created. And at times we manufacture or we create things too. That becomes our own creation. Apart from what God has created, his creation. He does not want our faith to be anything like that. That's why he doesn't live in temples made with human hands. And he wants us to trust him, trust his word. Not even my word. I'm your leader. I know you love me, but not even my word. Unless my word lines up with the word of God, or the word that I'm speaking to you is the word of God. I'm going to say that again. And I want to hear your amen. The Lord doesn't want you to place your trust in any person for salvation, Mm -hmm. for deliverance, for healing, for guidance, except in him and his word. So even though I'm your spiritual leader, Mm -hmm. you don't have any business following me, trusting what I say, unless I'm speaking life, I'm speaking truth, I'm speaking present truth to you. That's it. If it's outside the word of God, debunk it. Yeah. Don't follow it. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So here, this is what we have created. Oil is one. You see, but they are picking things from the word of God. Oil. Now, people, one idol is oil. So far as they have the, if you have, if you remember here, if you have one, I, I believe that you don't have it. But if you have one, because somebody took you somewhere, or you go and watch somebody, some video somewhere, and they talk about it, so you have it. And if you're using it, stop it. Like I said, I've not anointed people for years. New Year's Eve service. For years, when I got a revelation, I stopped anointing people for New Year's Eve service. Lay hands on them. Because it's God who keeps them. And I thank God for keeping you. Amen. Nobody has died. And uh, I'm saying that with humility. It's not. I'm not like bragging, but I have to say it because people have to hear it. Amen. And these so-called ministries that are not even people, they have people dying. They are proclamation, declaration that this year you leave from this 31st to another 31st and people die. I'm not talking about old people that must die. I'm talking about young ones. Amen. What am I trying to tell you? Your faith in the oil will kill you. Your faith in the oil doesn't have any power. No power. No power. That is why I stopped using it. Because I realized that people will put their confidence in the oil. So far as they have it, they put it on them. Yes. Now I'm going to talk about another thing that is so shocking. If you hear it. Even the name Jesus. It's not just you say Jesus, Jesus. But it's faith in the name. In the, name. the power in the name, the deliverance in the name, the cleansing effect in the name. That's what it is. It comes as persuasion, conviction. So it's not just going about Jesus. Like I was telling here, people pray and then you hear them say, in the mighty name of Jesus. And then the prayer is nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know how to, in the Bible it's not mighty name of Jesus. God is mighty. Jesus is mighty. We understand that. Much less name of Jesus. Victorious name, Jesus. Say something like this. It's biblical. The name that is above every name. Yeah, yeah. That's what Bible says. Amen. Amen. You see, but it's not saying just words. Yeah. Reading the Bible to God. Your conviction yeah. in those words. Jesus. 
That is what is key. So when you pray and you say in the name of Jesus, it's coming with power. Everything that is behind the name, within the name, works for the name comes to the team. Not just saying, you know, some denominations they are taught, and when they are going to say, Jesus, 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 you see? It's a ritual. How many times do you have to call him? So that has become a idol. That's why people walk around and say, we are pleading the blood. We are pleading the blood. You see, it's, it's not the blood that you are pleading, but you having this understanding of what the blood of Jesus stands for, Hallelujah. what the blood has accomplished, yes. what the blood continues to do yes. in your life as an individual. Amen. The power behind it, Amen. the conviction, yes. the persuasion, yes. the confidence. Amen. You see, I believe that if the blood of Jesus Christ is just like when you slaughter a goat or a chicken or whatever you can say, people will be storing that in your house. But you see, he says, don't make any what image. God doesn't want. <laughs> when he told the people to even mark their doorposts with the blood, it was just for one time. They didn't go back all the time marking their doorposts. That is how silly some Christians have become. The Holy Spirit doesn't lead them. They just go and practice tradition, ritual. What is the norm? Everybody is doing so they, they do it. But here, it wasn't the blood that they put on the doorpost. It was the authority behind the word, the instruction that was given. And then what made it work is their faith in the word, instruction, the obedience. Because first they believe the authority, the power, the source, the person who gave the instruction. So they place their trust in his word. Now, you can't take somebody's word serious if you don't trust them in the first place. True or false? I'll say that again. You can't take somebody's word serious if you don't trust them in the first place. But God, he is the faithful God. This has to stop. There's another one I do. Fasting is very popular. Prayer is another idol. You know, these are things that are scriptural, but the approach, how people go about these things, that is what makes it an idol or not. When your confidence is in that thing, and I know I grew up among these things, I know what I'm talking about. People feel powerful only when they have fasted. So now you know what is going on. Your God is abstinence from food. Mm -hmm. When you abstain from eating, then you think I'm powerful. Mm -hmm. When you eat, I'm not powerful. Mm -hmm. And if you come across some believers too, they'll say, mm, I don't feel okay, you know, because uh, I've not prayed enough. So, you know, have you heard that before? Yes. yes. You see, it's based in things. I'm standing here. I'm the husband of Pastor Joyce. Whether I pray or not, I'm still her husband. So far as he hasn't divorced me, or I haven't divorced her, you hear what I'm saying? I'm still her husband. Whether I fast or not, I'm still her husband. I can even move from here, US, and go to Ghana for some time, or go to the Bahamas and chill out there. I'm still what? Her husband. Why don't, you, why don't we get it and we struggle with these things? Because we are used to things. Yeah. Things on earth create the creation. Yeah. Things, images. Oh, I'm looking for something I can put my faith in. You know, I'm looking for a point of contact. So, so far as you have the neck, necklace, or you have bracelet, whatever, ring. You know, somebody prayed over it, you have it on the day, you think, yeah, I'm protected. If you stand before a man of God and tells you, he doesn't even pray like me, I'll pray for you. I'll tell you, look, you, you, <laughs> you are stronger than you think you are. I'll tell you that. And I'll say, look, the kind of protection that you have, I don't need to pray for you. The person will look at you like, oh, where I came from, my pastor, I see before I travel, he will lay hands on me and pray special prayers. 
He's done you great disservice, injustice, in big time. He has to teach you to know what you carry. You know what? That is why some of these pastors, ministers, have become false gods. Because they are teaching people to trust on them. One said, I dedicate cards. You know, and what happened to him? How happy it happened to him? He said, I've been dedicating cards. People will buy cards and come to me as a pastor and I'll dedicate them. And then he said, he got to a time, I'm dedicating cards, they're not giving me one. And it affected me. And I said, how? You, you give me cards, you're always coming to me as you dedicate the cards for me. Dedicating cards is not part of the uh, role, the responsibility of a minister. No. No. Then he said it was so bad that he, he, he shifted that uh, responsibility over to another bishop. That uh, now they should go to him and then he can dedicate their cards because he can handle it. You see, but here, the moment you get, the moment you set your foot here and you establish, you know, yourself as a member, we will teach you how to pray. So you can pray for yourself and pray for somebody. Dedicating cards, any, anybody here, Tell me, did I dedicate any of your cars? And uh, did you have an accident? Some foolish, uh, whatever, mythology. Some philosophy that has no legs. is a lame. People think that, oh, this car, my pastor, my prophet, my apostle, touch it. He laid down on this car. No, don't kill yourself. You see, you are worshipping a person. You see, your trust is not in God who said, I am your shepherd and I will keep you. Mm -hmm. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. Do you get the picture? Yeah. And that is why I'm going to say this. When I say this, people will say I'm being mean. Why? But that's why, the, <laughs> let me say it well. I normally say that's why there are so many injuries and casualties. But that's why some people are dying. To them, they are believing God, but they are not believing God. Right. Misplaced. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have this thing. And it's a secret. They are not telling anybody. You may be a member here, and probably somebody gave you a bottle, uh, oil from somewhere. And then he said, you know, When I was growing up, somebody was trying to do that to me, and I refused. I said, No. They said, Oh, me too, I'm a Christian. And we go to church here in blood. There's this oil, you have to use it. I said, No, I'm not using any oil. I was in my 23s and I was in my 34s. Even that time I knew better. Mm. And I've not used oil. For protection? Mm. What? His word is powerful enough. Amen. Then I've seen another thing too. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sword! Sword! God have mercy. You know in some churches they have carved images. They have crosses. Small, tiny, tiny crosses. That when they are going to pray for somebody, they have to hold it to pray for it. They call something a rod. You know, metal. And then they hold that too. You know, some of these churches, that's what they use. Look, in the Bible, Jesus didn't come with any rod. Even though he died on the cross, he's not carrying that. That's why when you come to my house, you will see a picture of Jesus. You will see a cross even in my house. You, you will see it. It's in my heart. And meanwhile, Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's seated on the right hand. Place of power and authority. Those who see the cross, that's why always they are crying out, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You see? But it's a progress. When you become processed, when you get born, you become born again. You progress. You see, from the cross, and then you go to the resurrection, and then you go through what? Ascens ascension. Then you go to what? The city. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. So you start that way, you grow, you progress in revelation, in knowledge, in maturity. That's when you begin to exercise authority and become what God has ordained for you to be. Some people are still at the cross. So they like the song, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And I did, and I did, my sin was rolled away. And it was there, and I did, and I did, like that. You know, always at the cross. Always at the what are you doing? The guy who suddenly didn't stay at the cross, he's gone. What are, what are you looking for at the cross? Do you get what I'm saying? Wrong teaching. That's why some people see Jesus still. Oh, he's a baby. Christmas time, they see Jesus. Jesus, you know. 
Somebody said Jesus is a cool kid. Who told you Jesus is a cool kid? He's not. Wrong teachings. And what what balance? People don't like this kind of teachings. When you talk this way, they are so used to that tradition. In Acts chapter 3, when he healed the, uh, the person at the beautiful gate, he said, and his name, through faith in his name, has made uh, what, this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That is uh, Acts 3, 16. Do you get it? He said, faith, his name, and faith in that name, persuasion, conviction. Amen. Like I know. That's what it means. Not just saying Jesus. But you can put Jesus, a stick out Jesus on your car. It won't do a it won't do squat. It won't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's your conviction. So now that's why you don't see me with Jesus, Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is seriously rooted in my heart. Seriously. That's where I stand. When I walk, I walk with confidence because I know he's on guard. He's angels. And they better not drop the ball because I'm so precious in his sight. You understand what I'm saying? I walk in this. That's why I thank him for what? Protection. I'm not going to pray out of fear and say, Father, you know now, I'm going to go outside the country. I'm going to go out and it's dark. You know, this place is uh, dangerous. And so I'm asking you, discharge your angels. Everything I have to do too is already in me, yeah. inside of me. Right. You have to know how to draw it. Yes. Draw it. Yeah. Access it. And make use of it. Amen. Life has changed for me. Hallelujah. Prayer is different. And I'm seeing this since I'm not just talking. I've lived this way for years, so I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then for, for, for folks. Jesus made a powerful statement. I think I can make that statement. Where are you? In Mark, Mark 7, 20. I'm, I'm, I'm now going everywhere because I have to learn. Yeah. Mark 7, 20. Jesus says something. And he said, what comes out of a man that defiles a man? What comes out of a man? What pollutes? What contaminates? What makes somebody unclean? Is what comes out. It was something about food. No word goes inside. Do you understand it? Yeah. Because the kingdom of God is not what? Meat and drink. Mm -hmm. It's not in the tangible. So if you place your faith in a chair, oh, you know, you guys just, just place me in the you see that chair that is beside my, my best side. Just 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 place me in the chair, I'll be fine. Just place me in the chair. Because somebody told you that that chair, chair is powerful. So let's say if you are far away from home, <laughs> you are far away from home, if something happens to you, you want to be carried to where the chair is. Yeah. No. Jesus is everywhere. Hallelujah. Let him be in your heart. Amen. Let him sit on the throne of your heart. Amen. I will title this probably the creator the created and creation. The creator, the created and creation. So God doesn't want us to depend the arm of flesh will fail him. He doesn't want us to depend on anything that we have manufactured. We human beings, the created, have also created. Do you get what I'm saying? He wants our faith in him, confidence in him. Amen. And Jesus showed it to us. Jesus didn't give people oil. He didn't give them any fasting agenda. He didn't give them any prayer topics to go pray. He says, your faith has made you whole. Why? They have faith in him, Jesus Christ. They have faith in him, Jesus Christ. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Faith in him. That is key. How do we come to the same knowledge? Faith in Christ. How do we receive the Holy Spirit baptism? Faith in Christ. The gift of life. How do we receive it? Faith in Christ. Why are we now changing to things that are lifeless? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I 
may come back and continue because I don't think I've done justice to this, but it's okay because of time I want to end. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to charge you with the uh, words in Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 13. Start from the little bit. Well, Jesus, the anointed one, has made you free. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.